Good morning. <laughs> I think still just. Look, it is a great honour to host uh, my very good friend, uh, Prime Minister Marape, here today and return the hospitality that I received when I visit, uh, visited uh, Port Moresby and we WEWAC uh, earlier uh, this year and had the great honour of being the first uh, person from outside Papua New Guinea to address the parliament in Port Moresby. Australia and Papua New Guinea share a very special relationship. It is uh, 50 years since the decision was made in December 1973 by the Whitlam Labor government to grant independence to Papua New Guinea. And since then, that relationship with that shared history has meant that we have developed uh, still so close, but as equals, as equals and as partners. And today, uh, we take that partnership to a new level. As close neighbours and regional leaders, our security and prosperity are bound together. We help each other in times of need and we respond together to the needs of the Pacific family. Since coming to government, we've boosted our support for Papua New Guinea's economic ambitions in infrastructure, health, education and labour mobility. And we've made progress on improving visa processing and access. It's uh, down from uh, more than 50 days down to under 14 now, uh, just this year. Most recently, we've worked together to help the Solomon Islands deliver security for its successful Pacific Games that were held in Honiara. Today, we have fulfilled our commitment to elevate our partnership by signing a legally binding bilateral security agreement. This is a comprehensive and a historic agreement. It will make it easier for Australia to help PNG address its internal security needs and for Australia and Papua New Guinea to support each other's security and the region's stability. Policing and domestic security are priorities for my friend Prime Minister Marape. They are essential for the economic development of PNG and for the welfare of the people of that great nation, which the Prime Minister always reminds me is a nation of 800 languages. Uh, that's what you call uh, diversity. And that, of course, means that an absolute priority is how you bring uh, social cohesion to such a diverse uh, population. We have listened to the Prime Minister's priorities and I can announce today a new package of support for policing infrastructure and training for the Royal PNG Constabulary, as well as new support for the judiciary, correctional services and combating gender-based violence. We are also announcing today that Australia will support PNG to establish a police recruit and investigations training centre to help Papua New Guinea build a larger, more capable police force and provide training to other Pacific police forces. This security agreement is a natural progression in our security partnership. It builds on our comprehensive strategic and economic partnership. It reinforces our mutual respect for each other's sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity. And of course, if you stand on Sabai Island in the Torres Strait, you can literally see Papua New Guinea. And if you're a good swimmer, you might be able to swim there as well. I look forward very much to hosting uh, Prime Minister Marape on February 8 as a guest of government and him addressing a joint sitting of parliament, which will be the first address by a leader uh, to our parliament uh, since uh, President Widodo at the beginning of 2020. So this will be the first in four years. Uh, we'll return the honour that I received in January of uh, being the first uh, foreign leader uh, to address uh, that parliament. And uh, I have written to the Speaker today and uh, with the support as well of the Leader of the Opposition, uh, we look forward uh, to welcoming uh, Prime Minister Marape for that joint sitting of Parliament. 
Papua New Guinea can always count on Australia. We share a future, and together we're building a partnership that will deliver peace, prosperity and opportunity for our people and for our region. Prime Minister Marape. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much, my good uh, uh, friend, uh, brother, the Prime Minister of uh, Australia, the Honourable uh, uh, Albanese. Uh, today is a good uh, moment in which uh, board leaders representing our two people, uh, our two governments, uh, one more time entrenching our shared history, our deep bond, and our, and, and our uh, two countries' closeness. Uh, one more time deeper in the security agreement that we've just signed. I want to say thank you very much for the warm hospitality. Uh, Prime Minister Albanese and your team has run it to me and my delegation. Uh, but this is not just one moment in which Australia has been hospitable to Papua New Guinea. Uh, we became a sovereign nation from the hands of Australia when uh, the Australian flag was lowered for the first time in the afternoon of September 15th. Uh, 1975 and when PNG's flag was hosted for the first time in September 16, 1975. Uh, Australia, uh, 50 years ago, this date, uh, we would be uh, seven days into our own self-government. It, for it was December 1st, uh, 1973 that uh, the Labour Whitlam government granted the Somare Pangu government uh, the self-government uh, authority, and from there a march to uh, sovereignty uh, took place, and two years later, in September 16, 1975, we became independent. The construct of what is modern-day Papua New Guinea has a lot of input uh, by Australia right from day one. In fact, even before day one, the structure of our judiciary, the structure of our public service, the structure of our education system, the sovereign borders we have today was a construct of what became Papua New Guinea under Australian words, Australian sovereignty. And today, 48 years on, <clears throat> we've had uh, our own uh, travel together as two nations, brother and sister nations. Uh, I am happy uh, that my friend, Prime Minister Albanese, under his words and my words, <clears throat> we have now signed what is a historic uh, bilateral security agreement that not only look into one spectrum of security, but encompasses quite a broad spectrum of security that, uh, that covers not just police, but looks into judiciary, has a working relationship with our defense, also look into the economic security of our people, as well as every other uh, aspects that deals with our national prosperity and our national well-being. And I want to thank all Australian taxpayers, uh, and, and, and it is not just in the personal interest of Prime Minister Albanese to forge a deeper working relationship with Australia uh, and PNG. You've always given support to us. Uh, what happens up north of uh, your borders has a deep, uh, deep shared effect, benefit, consequences on our region. We have emerged as joint leaders in our part of planet Earth. In the world of many relationships out there, uh, we choose to ensure we go deepen and strengthen our own bond with Australia because uh, it, is, it, is, it is home for us. Uh, I was telling your Prime Minister, Australian Prime Minister earlier in our meeting, <clears throat> we have many plate tectonics that anchor PNG together, but the biggest is the Australian plate below that holds uh, our part of PNG and the Australian continent together. Uh, that just simply depicts that we are joined at the hips uh, go, uh, forever and going forward. It is in our leadership interest that we construct a future today and the signing of the uh, uh, strategic uh, security agreement between Australia and Papua New Guinea is a step in constructing what will be our set future as it has been our set past. And I want to appreciate Prime Minister Albanese's leadership. Uh, when we invited you to address our parliament on the 12th of January this year, uh, you became the first foreign leader to address our national parliament. Uh, that was not coincidental, it was meant to be. Uh, it, it would have been an Australian prime minister to address our parliament. It happened to be you, my friend. And I, I'm just happy that you are giving uh, me an opportunity to address uh, your parliament on the 8th of February in 2024. 
uh, to uh, emerging Australians and emerging Papua New Guineans. Uh, you, we can never compromise our, our, our two nations' closeness, uh, our two nations' cultures, our two nations' uh, uh, history, and more importantly, as we lead us gel together, it is an indication to citizens of Australia and Papua New Guinea. Uh, business of Australia and Papua New Guinea, uh, public service of Australia and Papua New Guinea, that it is in our combined interest to work together going forward into the future. Uh, and I just look forward to uh, uh, that moment to address the Parliament. But thank you very much for the opportunity for us to sign the uh, security agreement. It will then be worked upon to consolidate our two national interests, our two uh, uh, countries, people, and of course, government to government working relationships going forward. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ashley Raper. Uh, Papua New Guinea has wanted to be a friend to all, enemy to none, but you've now signed a defence agreement with the United mm. States, this security uh, agreement with Australia. So can we take this as a sign that you're in fact picking a side in the strategic competition between the United States and China? Uh, it's never picking a side. You know, every, every relationship has its own peculiar views. Our common foreign uh, uh, policy, uh, uh, I beg your pardon, our major foreign policy as friends to all enemies to none remains. And uh, it's never picking a side. We have specific aspects of relations with every nation we choose to, uh, with Australia, with, with, uh, with USA. Uh, those are the relations we pick, and uh, it's never at the expense of our relationships elsewhere. Ben. Prime Minister Marape, on security, um, Bougainville is the region's biggest potential security flashpoint. Four years ago, 97.7 per cent of Bougainvillians voted for independence from PNG. Mr Marape, do you commit a government you lead to ratifying that re referendum result? And to Mr Albanese, um, Australia's party to the Bougainville peace agreement. Should PNG respect the overwhelming free vote of Bougainvillians and allow Bougainville its independence? I'll, I'll say very uh, clearly answer first before Mr Marape. I respect PNG's sovereignty and those issues are a matter for Papua New Guinea. All right, we, uh, Australia was part of the peace process. New Zealand was part of the peace process in, uh, in uh, uh, 2001 when we reached the uh, Bougainville Peace Agreement. Um, the process is on foot. The, the final leg of the peace process means national parliament will uh, rectify, in, in, in the words of the peace agreement, rectify the results. And so the two sides, the national government and the autonomous Bougainville government, uh, have a handle on the peace agreement process. It is, it is a peace agreement process, uh, meaning for a peaceful solution to the Bougainville issue. The political question, the political, proce political process is another, another part of the conversation. We are on time, on schedule, to honor the, con uh, honor the uh, 2001 peace process, the ratification process will take precedence. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Prime Minister. Um, Prime Minister Marape, can I just clarify, is it your expectation that this agreement that's been signed today will be ratified or will need to be ratified by the parliament or will it be binding on signature? Uh, and can I also ask, uh, just in the, the details of the security pact, is there any clause whatsoever that implies any sort of exclusive rights for Australia here? Does it exclude Papua New Guinea signing similar agreements with any other country, uh, or is that not the case? And Mr Albanese, on that subject, can I ask, did Australia, as was reported earlier this year, push for any exclusionary language in this treaty uh, during the negotiation process? Well, uh, if, I, if you don't sure. mind, uh, my friend, uh, there is no exclusivity in, in between this one. This one gives respect to PNG and Australia's own security need and our own, own uh, peculiar aspects of our security. Uh, lest we forget, we, we source more investments from Australian investments and, and, uh, in PNG right now. The biggest hold of investors are Australian investors in our country. Security in all aspects uh, has, uh, is important for PNG as much as it's for Australia. Uh, there's no exclusivity. We, Australia has given us respect to our relationship elsewhere. Uh, this is dovetailed in a manner in which it protects our own uh, national interests to have economic and uh, security relationship elsewhere, uh, but more importantly, it is signed in a manner in which uh, Australia wants to get involved in PNG. PNG invited them to come in. It was not Australia forcing its way in. Uh, PNG invited uh, Australia, and we had uh, two teams sitting on the table. The construct is mutually satisfying, respects 
Australian sovereignty as much as Australia respects PNG sovereignty in what we've signed. So I'm satisfied. He's satisfied. Australian people should be satisfied. PNG people should be satisfied. There is no need for us to go to my own parliament. The constitutional process was deployed. It, uh, all elements of legal requirements have been uh, satisfactorily dispensed with. Uh, my signature and my colleague's signature is as good as uh, where it go now. We have a clauses inside. That allows for us to have a review in this one. And uh, as, as every agreement, there's enough room for improvement, but there's enough basis for us to get to work to ensure that uh, it, it pays dividend to the benefit of Papua New Guinea as much as our responsibility to ensure security is improved up there in PNG. Thanks, Prime Minister. This is a legally binding agreement. Uh, the approach, as Prime Minister Marape has said, came from Papua New Guinea, and we worked it through in a way that uh, we both got exactly what we wanted uh, from this process. Uh, this will assist uh, not just external security uh, for both PNG and Australia, but will assist as well with the internal security arrangements uh, within Papua New Guinea with uh, the provisions that are there on issues such as uh, assistance with police training and with those facilities and infrastructure. It's a very comprehensive agreement. Uh, it comes into effect now, and uh, that is uh, a very important, and I believe uh, will have overwhelming support. Prime Minister Marape uh, generously spoke about the support that Australia has given Papua New Guinea uh, historically uh, when it has come to defence relationships. But I'll make this concluding point. All Australians should give thanks to the people of Papua New Guinea for the assistance that was given to our Australian diggers during World War II. PNG citizens uh, gave their lives protecting Australian defence personnel. And of course, that was at a time where uh, the territorial uh, integrity of PNG was, that was a, a, a part of, if you like, uh, you know, Australia in terms of the relations. Uh, but the people of Papua New Guinea, and when I attended uh, WeWAC in the north there and went to uh, the base uh, that is there as well, you see throughout Papua New Guinea, not the least of which the history of the Kokoda Trail, uh, where there's a memorial uh, in pretty close to my electorate in the inner west of Sydney, in the electorate next door in Reed. Uh, this is a relationship uh, that was forged literally with giving lives of both Australians and Papua New Guineans uh, for each other, uh, for our interests going forward. And that's why uh, we have no closer friend than Papua New Guinea. And what today does is cement that relationship. Thanks very much. Thank you. <clears throat>